Hello, Dorbaton. I was uh, watching some of your videos on the uh, atheism versus theism debate. I'm not really normally interested in this, but I uh, saw a couple of these, and um, I was the, the impish side of me was horribly tempted to throw you some curveballs, so uh, here they are. Uh, just for the record, I do happen to be a theist. Uh, I don't normally make videos on this, but uh, I'm going to do it now. I'm in philosophy, and I'm in uh, my major is phys physics. In particular, I'm in theoretical physics. So some of these are based on that, but um, so some of the uh, topics I'm going to get into probably require whole videos of their own to properly address, but I'm just going to cut to the chase of them and give you the conclusions of these, just to sort of mess your, uh, your certitude up a little bit. Let's see here. Okay, so first video I'm responding to is Veritas 48 is illogical about God creating the universe. Basically, you're asking how can an immaterial mind create a material universe? Well, the question is, is, um, is the universe really material at all in the first place? And uh, with modern physics, it doesn't really appear to be. And I'm not going to get into, you know, weird, flaky arguments on this. However, the, uh, the solid argument comes from quantum gravity, and that is the increasing picture of the world is that deep down, the entire universe is actually made of quantum information flowing around the Planck scale. So it's not really actually matter as such, it's really sort of thought stuff or strings of programming as it were. So, that kind of takes care of that problem. God is by definition immaterial. Fine, universe is by definition material. Well, that's the question, of course. Uh, then we say, uh, Veritas 48 apparently figures that you know, God thought the universe into existence. Some, I don't really have a problem with this. Uh, you do. You say that thoughts require prefrontal lobes, uh, hypocampuses, other, other neurons, and so forth. Well, that's sort of true with humans. I mean, we, our brains are able to access thoughts like this. However, and this comes from physics again, I'm going to suggest looking up uh, Roger Penrose. Uh, in reality, thoughts, or the stuff thoughts are made of, rather, are programmed in at the Planck scale. And they're made of quantum information, once again. And uh, our brains are able to access this quantum information because the microtubules between the neurons are able to decohere the environment enough to kind of push out medium-scale quantum activity. And so it's not at all irrational or hard to imagine how the universe could be, you know, thought of by God or whatever because it's made of the same stuff. The thoughts are made of quantum information and the universe at the bottom is ultimately made of quantum information. Okay, so that's the first one. The second video is way down here. Where is this? No, that's too far. Ah, yeah, here we are. Counter Kalam, the secular answer to and decimation of the KCA. All right. Premise one. No, nope. wait. No, no. Whatever began to, begins to exist has a natural cause. Premise two. The universe began to exist. Conclusion. Therefore, the universe has a natural cause. Okay, that that follows. Uh, keep going. Natural cause means a spatial temporal causation that uses pre existent ma energy matter to produce a new extant configuration. Um, not really true. Most of it is, but um, I don't know if you realize this, but the from my area, from what I've been studying, it appears that the universe is actually made of wave functions, including space time. And so when you get down far enough, natural causes are not really spatial temporal at all. They're um, Quantum gravity, in particular, uh, you know, we, we're trying to study how gravity works at the, you know, more fundamental level than Einstein. And Einstein pointed out that gravity is curved space-time. Well, in order to explain curved space-time, you need to have something more fundamental than it. Otherwise, it's going to be circular, right? So we have to find something that is non-local and non-temporal. Um, you can already see this kind of thing with quantum entanglement, where there's non-locality, but this kind of the takes it to the next step where it's completely extra-local. It's basically programming in space-time is sort of a construct from the programming. 
All right. A supernatural cause, you say, is thus an aspecial, atemporal causation that creates new matter and energy from nothing. Well, that kind of sounds like uh, how I was describing the wave function. And I'm going to point out here that the wave function actually doesn't have any physical units of its own. It's just a pure mathematical probability. And the uh, funny thing is, is that it appears to have a sort of physical existence, as it were, even though it's math the equations define it as purely mathematical. And then, of course, the question is, is how can, you know, energy, space, and time all derive from this? Well, the answer is it's really isomorphic. Um, isomorphism is a something that's tautologous on the outside, but is complex on the inside. So the wave function defines the whole set, defines the entire quantum state, but then within that you have, you know, the wave function over space, the wave function over time, and then there's energy conditions. And so space, time, and energy, you can see as defining each other kind of circularly, and you can, within that system, you can then create a sort of physical world, but the physical world, the physicalness of the physical world is all internally constructed. And then you say, okay, supernatural cause is thus, okay, that creates new matter and energy from nothing. Well, I'm going to give you a little surprise here. I'm going to tell you to look up the Wheeler-DeWitt equation on uh, Wikipedia. And it turns out that there's not really a problem with the universe being created from nothing. And uh, this doesn't violate energy conservation at all, because it turns out that the entire net energy content of the universe already is zero. And uh, that's going to sound completely insane at first until you realize why. You know, people have actually observed this with telescopes, so they can see that the, the universe is completely flat. Positive energy would bend it one way, negative energy would bend it the other way. Well, they looked out, it doesn't bend either way, it's perfectly flat. Now, why is this? Well, in order to have potential energy, the universe has to be inside a potential field of some sort. You, know, you roll a ball up a hill, and then the ball has potential energy. Well, the universe, to have potential energy, would have to be within a potential field, but then, by definition, it would no longer be the universe because there would be something outside the universe that is physical, and that by definition doesn't, you know, it wouldn't be the universe anymore. So there isn't any net potential energy in the universe. And then secondly, uh, with the Wheeler-DeWitt equation, it says that the Hamiltonian of the universe has to be zero. The Hamiltonian is the total energy minus the kinetic energy, and so that equals zero. So then, logically, with the total energy, the kinetic energy has to be zero as well because the potential energy is zero. And this actually makes sense from a, a different perspective as well, because, you know, in order to have kinetic energy, particles have to be moving, but, you know, with respect to the universe, it's not moving with respect to anything. It's stationary with its own average reference frame, so in its own average reference frame, all of the energy cancels out exactly, and there is total zero energy in the universe. And uh, basically just think of it as cutting zero in half, you get negative ones and positive ones, and then we're just the ones rather than the negative ones, and that's how we get the stuff, despite the fact that there is no energy in the universe. So, uh, no, this isn't really illogical at all. Um, it seems illogical because you know, we're often stuck believing that every or intuitively it appears everything's material, but that really isn't the case with uh, theoretical physics today. So. I guess that's kind of the, the basis for your arguments here, and uh, gives you something to think about. See you later. I'll upload this now.